Danielle and I'll be your host. I am so thrilled to be with you today. We are celebrating the second anniversary of the app Moril. If you know Moril, you definitely know my co-host, Annie Bear, who's the strategist and project manager of this beautiful app. How are you? Very good. Thanks, Sabine. I'm so happy we're here together. We're going to talk about the app, but I'd like to know how... Uh, why are we celebrating today? Moril has two years, but we couldn't have done it without the support of a huge community that helped us throughout the whole development, the, the, the creating the strategy behind it. So today, it's not only our birthday. I think it's our birthday to, to each of us who has been working on this project. So we're there to thank you and celebrate you as well. Yes, there's a lot of people to help too put this together, mm -hmm. this beautiful app together. And I know there's a lot of people connected through live screen listening to us right now. And we really want it to be an exchange and a conversation. How can people join the conversation throughout the celebration with us? There's one simple way to do it. There is a platform called uh, Slido. Mm -hmm. So you can go to uh, add the address sli.do and engage in a conversation with us. Uh, let us know what your feedback are or any questions. You enter the code MARIL2023. And then I'll be here uh, throughout this conversation, the discussion with all the guests where I can maybe share some of the feedback we've got or answer any questions. So. Don't be shy. We're there to have a conversation with, with you as well. Yes, that's why she's my co-host. Mm, yeah. So to better understand the impact of this app, we really need to go way back to the beginning. Today, we're joining two of Moril's earlier community builders. Mm -hmm. And with me, I'm pleased to introduce René-Claude Ménard, Chief of Staff, Executive uh, Vice President of Radio-Canada. Hi. Bonjour. Hi. Bonjour. <laughs> Bilingual. I love that. <laughs> and also Marie-Josée Marie Amel, Professor of Official Languages and Bilingualism Institute at the University of Ottawa. Hi. Welcome to have you. Before we start the conversation, I have a big question for mm -hmm. you, Anne, because I'm going to get them talking. But I want to know, how did the vision start to have this app? Because it's such a, you know, it's a different app. So how did you get that vision? Mm -hmm. And what was the vision? So the, vi yeah. <laughs> so the vision was looking at the language learning ecosystem. We realized that it, it felt like there was one right way to speak French and what one right way to speak English. And it was nothing that was reflecting the way that people speak both languages here in the Canada. The reality. The reality, exactly. So. We came up this with we came up with the vision that we could use our cultural content as the starting point to develop a learning journey, a learning process for the for the learners. So that's what's kind of the big dream, the big <laughs> vision. And then of course we work with different communities and experts to make this dream uh, possible. Yes. And talking about this vision, which is a big vision, I have to start with uh, <laughs> René Claude, because it's a big vision and everything happened during the pandemic, really early on when the pandemic started. What was the first step that you took um, to make this big dream happen into a reality? Because now we're celebrating our two two second year anniversary. We're just a little toddler, you know, we're <laughs> two years old. So yes. we still have, our, in our, we're in our baby steps. But I think we needed a little bit of craziness because we did all this during the pandemic. Uh, so, you know, resources were hard to find, uh, both, you know, online and in reality. Yes. But uh, the first, first, first thing that we, first idea that spurred was that we can't do this on our own. We, we're not experts in learning tools. That's not what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So we need to outreach and, and really, really engage and, and try to connect with people that do that on a daily basis, that connect with people that understand the learning process and give us that feedback so that we don't do it alone. So we learned, we, we met Marie-Josée first off and she jumped in first off and we, we, we had the privilege of having access to a network of, of groups of of uh, both teachers and, and parents uh, like the Canadian Parents for for French and Kazalt, uh, groups that really straight off held, uh, gave us all kinds of cues and ideas on how we should approach this app to make it 
an interesting learning tool and a complementary learning tool yes. of what what is already out there in, in both schools and associations and, and libraries everywhere mm -hmm. where you know people are, are, are wanting to learn a second language or a third language or fifth language. So yes. that's how it happened. So with a little bit of craziness, like I said. <laughs> we need that, we need that. And like we said, we started this app uh, during the pandemic. And I wanna turn to Anne because you are leading that project. Uh, and I wanted to know, there's a lot of people that took part on uh, on the journey to create that, pa that app. I'd like to know who took part in developing, really helping you at the beginning during the pandemic? Mm -hmm. Because people have no clue. We were, we were trying to find ways to communicate. And like yeah. you said, it took a lot of craziness. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we have an app. So um, who, who, took, who helped you develop th that app at the early start? Well, I think what makes it very good solid team is when we know exactly what our strengths are and where do we lack knowledge or mm -hmm. expertise. So from the get-go, we knew that we we do have the expertise in content. I mean, we're media, so we know great content and how to produce it or broadcast it. But And we also have the expertise of building strong digital product. But obviously, for a language learning app, there's there's a third leg missing. Yes, we needed so help. We, need, we <laughs> needed help, as, as René-Claude said. So we, we put together a consultative committee of experts. Um, Marie-Josée is part of that amazing committee. And we'll be talking and to we, we came to them with this dream sharing what vision was and asking them can is it is it crazy to make that happen can you help us uh, shape the product in a way that it's it's motivating engaging and that it ha it does have an impact in people's lives so mm -hmm. it was with great humility that we started the process and listening and, and being challenged with all the members to make this happen i repeat this uh, it's without their help and without everyone we could not have the app that we have today. So I just want to, a moment to just congratulate everyone in, in the team. Uh, well, Marie-Josée, um, she said you came on early on to the committee. I'd like to know, how did this committee took shape? Because you guys were nine people across Canada. Yes, I think, well, it started, It I think it started with a conversation, kind of an informal conversation mm -hmm. with Anne, uh, who, who knew that at our official languages and bilingual institute there was expertise in mm -hmm. um, teaching and learning of second languages. And then she found me through the more specific expertise I have in digital technologies and its use for uh, this kind of purpose. And this was just before COVID. Um, and then it was by word of mouth, because it's a small world. Academia is a small world of experts. And in Canada, uh, although we have a body of expertise in, um, in questions related to bilingualism and teaching and learning languages, a few of us have the specific interest in uh, language engineering and technologies, etc. So, and I knew other colleagues. So I knew, for instance, uh, Martine Pellerin, who is at the faculty Saint-Jean, University of Alberta, and on the East Coast, I knew, for instance, Carla Cullingham through the association, through CASALT, Canadian Association for Second Language Teaching, and so on. So a committee of nine persons kind of came together and, uh, and has been consulted, you know, throughout the development on various aspects of the app, uh, content aspects uh, as well as uh, interface aspects and you, you know, user experience and so on. Um, and it's been truly a rich experience for me and truly collaborative and very, very positive. And I think due to the dynamism of the team and of the vision of Anne and the openness of everybody kind of to um, not uh, set things in, in mortar, you know, in bricks and mortars and just be flexible and, th and see things and accept the perspectives of one another. Uh, mm -hmm. That's important what you're saying because honestly, we didn't know this whole ecosystem you know, existed in Canada. Mm -hmm. and, and having that Canadian perspective, having that, you know, hands-on learning, teaching experience from these experts, experts mm -hmm. was yeah. like gold for us. It was so enriching and has molded the way we developed that app. You know, it was not done yeah. 
uh, you know, only one-sided, you know, l thinking of the content only in content only. We, we really yeah. consulted, wanted to learn about, we didn't know about the levels of, if, you know, learning levels, we didn't know that. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, a whole new world was revealed to us. And that, that's why I think it's, it's key to the success of Maril yeah. in its two-year form. It's which quite is, incredible. It's quite incredible, but, but, you know, together, you know, is always better than alone. Yeah. So uh, I thank you, and yeah. I thank that committee, because really, it really forged, you know, the shape of Maril, mm -hmm. the Maril that is today. And we'll keep doing it as well. I mean, it's a continued process. We, we're not done. We're it's done because we're... We're two years old that yeah, we stopped exactly. evolu ev the evolution yes. of it. So we keep engaging in conversation, and that's that's a, an ongoing Process. collaboration. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I have a question. You mentioned vision. There's a lot of apps, learning apps, to learn Absolutely. English and French on our cell phones. And I wanted to know, what was the vision to make it different from the other apps that we could find? It's a good question. You know, I've been... Uh, training future teachers to use technologies or using technologies for language learning for 30 years now. So can, you can imagine how much it has changed mm -hmm. and how much it has evolved. And I think for Radio-Canada, uh, you have to do things you do well. And listening comprehension and providing, uh, providing Canadians with authentic uh, contents uh, and giving them the chance to learn a language through uh, the culture through situations that are various, through different accents and so on, is core. That capacity to hear uh, and to, to, to hear and uh, this audiovisual more and more mm -hmm. capacity is, um, is the foundation of the other skills that you will learn. So, and I think that in a country where, uh, you know, we don't have necessarily access to the other language in authentic context, this comes mm -hmm. to you. And I think that's where uh, it's important to expose our, our Canadians to, to those, uh, those cultural contents that we have in, in both languages. And to that point, you know, uh, it was also a very big collaborative effort between Radio-Canada and CBC mm -hmm. because we acted like a curation, actually, in <laughs> trying to show off that yes. regional content, mm -hmm. that cultural content that is unique, that only CBC and Radio-Canada can provide, you know, and so it was, uh, you know, I salute my CBC colleagues because they really, really mm -hmm. engaged with us in making Muriel happen and live, you know, so. so I'm so messy. happy. I'm so happy you guys talk about that because we could see it's a, you know, it's a big effort of different people, you know, uh, taking part in developing an app because we have two official languages in Canada and also so many different accents, so, so many different expression from one region to another and we're really reflecting that diversity in that app. Thank you very much for bringing such an insight to an application that's on our cell phone, on our tablets, and also where it started. And like you mentioned, René Claude, it is a, a toddler, so there is more evolution to come. Merci. You're more than welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Anne, what an evolution in two years. Yeah, it's been a quite a ride. <laughs> yes. Talking about a ride, I'd like to know, you know, it's it's. we talked about so many things, many points here mm -hmm. since the beginning and I'd like to know what's an educational path because we talked about how you know we developed it where the idea and the vision came mm -hmm. but now we're talking more and more about educational path yeah. and what makes it different and I'd like to know what's the definition in Morel's application of an educational and informed path so on on Maril, we we have eight levels and when it comes to a learning path it means that we take the learner wherever he or she is on the ah. on the learning journey and make sure that they can really feel the sense of progression see themselves evolve and gain throughout this whole experience gain confidence in their linguistic skills um, so that's kind of the uh, the essence of it but to do this so we had 
uh, feedback from the community, uh, advices from the, the consultative group. But now we, you know, very early on, we also realized that we need to develop our own um, level of expertise internally. So that's why we brought in a team of teachers who's been working yeah, with us uh, from a uh, well, long time now. Yes, and what's really fun about this, it's because I'd like to welcome somebody that's really important because Anne mentioned that we have a group of, uh, you know, teachers and one of her teachers that really helped is Rosanna uh, Pearson. She's Maurice content writer in English as second language. Let's welcome Rosanna to the set. Hi. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. They, they even have a little music for you. Thank you for taking part into in this conversation. Thank you for having me. Well, Rosanna, I'd like to know, well, as a content writer in English second language, you taught in classrooms, right? And now you're a teacher online on an app. Uh, what really intrigued you about working in, on this project? Yeah, well, I think uh, what I find really intriguing and motivating about working on this project is its usefulness, right? I think that it can really make a difference in a learner's life and an everyday experience learning a language. Um, and I think an aspect of that is the, uh, the immersion, the illusion of immersion that we can offer, um, both cultural and linguistic. So the learners are sort of exposed to that authentic language, um, either in French or in English, in a way that they can't be uh, a lot of them in their everyday lives. So I think it's really useful. Superb. And I'd like to know, like, the starting point, we all know it's the content that we could find on CBC and Radio Canada. But I'd like to know what are the other criteria that was really important as a teacher to make sure that, you know, the learner is really learning from those content? Yeah, so, uh, yes, a lot of things we take into consideration. Um, one of them is diversity and sort of representing Canada and everybody in it. Mm -hmm. So that means, you know, including minorities, racialized groups, people with disabilities, members of the L LGBTQ community, um, everybody. We want everybody to be seen in the app. Um, yeah, so also a lot of the, the content we want to reflect everyday interactions, everyday experiences, which sort of ties back to that usefulness for learners. So they get to see how people actually behave in the real world. Um, and in Canada. And in Canada, <laughs> of course. Um, yes. Yeah, and of course there are also some uh, linguistic components that we, that we have to consider as, as teachers. Um, so things like vocabulary use, the speed at which someone is speaking, how formal uh, things are. Um, things, yeah. things we take for granted when we're born here, when yeah. exposed to it. Exactly. Uh, and sometimes we don't even know. I know English is my second language. I'm sure people heard that in my little <laughs> accent. Not even. But those, those, app, those content are really cru crucial. And I'd like to have, yeah. to know a little bit more about you know, the learner's experience. How do you make sure to motivate and engage those the learner that's you yeah. know in front of their screen and trying to learn a second language because yeah, yeah. it's not easy. No, no, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we uh, we make the comparison a lot. The moral is kind of like an older sibling to our learners, uh -huh. so uh, <laughs> they're there to guide and sort of motivate the learner along along their journey. So that means maybe pushing them a little bit outside of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, so all of that, hopefully, to become more independent learners so they can take what they've learned in the app outside into the real world. So doing things like the challenges that you see at the end of a unit um, is kind of bringing it into the real world. Um, it's like Marielle is your best friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've always said that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'd like to know, because you seem to, you know, you have your great smile. It seems like, you know, you really, really like working on this app. And I wanted to know what was the best experience so far working on this app that's only a toddler, like two years old. Yeah, right? I know. <laughs> I love this little toddler. Um, yeah, I think something that I'm really proud of is being able to work on something that I would have loved to use with my students, love to use in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, so as a teacher, I can be very proud of it. Um, but also I'm very proud of it because I'm also a moral user. I didn't speak any English at all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> no, no, but I use it for French, right, to, yeah. to improve. Um, and it feels really good to be behind uh, that. It kind of blows my mind every time I use it. So That's very really proud. cool. You're a user and a teacher. Imagine. So those amazing. Thank you 
you, Rosanna, for sharing your insight Thank about you like me. how mm -hmm. it's developed, how we pick the content. We really say it's really well curated, and it's really there's a huge thought process for sure. that thought hard. about it. Thank you, uh, Rosanna. Anna, um, we talked about a little bit about the mm -hmm. user experience, the teachers. There's a whole community around it. I'd like to know, um, you know, you built the community. You have the content strategy. So what is next? It's building the material. <laughs> building the app. <laughs> That's true. We gotta have a app. So we do. We we had the very clear vision. We had the teachers that were behind all the content strategy and writing all the the exercise that you see on the app. And then the last big missing piece is actually building the labs. The, the app. Uh, what's interesting is throughout all these people involved, everyone feels strongly about wanting to make a difference in the learner's life. And the last you know, piece was building the app with the amazing team of developers, project manager, and... Uh, There's a whole team behind whole it. whole team with a great expertise in building building app. And I'm, hey, I understand. We've mm -hmm. been seeing a lot of people around that app. And, you know, when you take an app, you don't think there's so many people behind it. <laughs> to speak a little bit more about this, I got a Moriz produ production owner, Patrice Fizet, joining us virtually. Welcome, Patrice. Hello. Hi. Hi, nice how are you? you? I'm good, thank you. How about you? I'm um, great. We were talking about the user's experience, and I would like to know what was really important to you to keep in mind overall when we were developing the app, about like the app Moril. Uh, well, the, the, the rigor it needs be in the team to be able to, to develop such an app. Uh, it takes a lot of... Uh, of uh, of skills uh, and, and rigor is really important mm -hmm. uh, and we need, we want to stay credible as well which is one of uh, Morel's uh, brand pillars um, and of course using best practices uh, for the app development uh, especially uh, including and especially accessibility because we really want the app to be used by uh, people with disabilities as much as you know any other uh, users they're all important I like the fact that you mentioned that um, inclusivity was really important. I wanted to know, like, now the app is two years old. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the user? Who are the users that use the application? Uh, we have different uh, diverse uh, user base. There's people who are... Um, using it for job opportunities. Uh, there's also newcomers looking for cultural linguistic immersion. Um, there's also retired people who are looking to improve their linguistic skills uh, at their own pace without the pressure of having to perform for specific mm -hmm. work. Uh, and, um, you know, people in general who want to keep learning. Yeah, We're, we always want to learn. And I'd like to know how do you keep into account all those, those different needs because we have different, you, you name a different type of users, new newcomers, uh, retired people, that's a lot of different needs. How do you make sure that you're taking everybody into account? Um, well, developing the app is not a linear process. You know, we're always going back to the user needs and, and, we're, and testing. Uh, we, um, we 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 want to keep we want to keep having exchanges with the, the learners so that we can uh, continuously improve the application. So it's not we're not working in silo by ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. wishing that what we're building is going to make a difference. We need to listen to the users so that what we're building makes sense and is uh, is um, um, interesting. For, uh, mm -hmm. for the learners. I like that you really keep in mind the, the user at the heart of the application. I'd like to know what's next. Now we're celebrating today our second anniversary. What's next for the app? Um, we are having a few functionalities coming, like uh, we wanna, want the users to, to be able to set themselves some objective because you need commitment when you want to learn a language. So maybe the idea of like trying to set up a routine and trying to stick to it. And obviously there's other um, 
technologies that are uh, really starting to, uh, to be popular right now, and we hear a lot about it. I'm thinking about machine learning, for example. So that's areas that we are looking for as well to, mm -hmm. to develop. It's always changing. Patrice, thank mm. you very much for thank really. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much for giving, be, being so insightful about what's behind it, the thought behind it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Anne, there's so much into that app. I am, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm so impressed because, you know, like I mentioned before, when we take a nap out of our phone, we d download it. We don't think there's that many thought. And so far we've met quite a few people and we talked about, you know, the future. Mm -hmm. What's in it for you? You're the lead on this project. When you think about the future, what do you think for Morel? We think about um, diversifying the, the learning path for the learners, making sure that we can have them practice other skills as well, and, and still keeping within the initial vision is using existing content to create a learning path. So one of the things we, we came up with, this vision of using not only the video, but how could we, uh, aside from the video and audio content, could we also use articles? So that's something we actually thinking about doing and uh, we have someone who's uh, joined the team uh, mm. to to share her skills uh, with us as developer and, and uh, expert okay. in linguistic, by the way, also. Which, which really brings me to share with you guys our next guest, mm -hmm. Vessi, a machine, listen to this, a machine learning developer who's going to join us virtually. And I have tons of questions to ask to Desi. Desi, are you here with us? <laughs> Hi, Desi. How yes, are you? Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. So I mentioned your title, machine learning developer. I'd like to know what does a machine learning developer do exactly in an app right. for Morel? <laughs> yeah. Well, in general, uh, you could you could see machine learning developer task as um, one of training algorithms to perform specific tasks. A bit like an adult teaches a child how to do things, right? With examples, with games, with demonstrations, because you can't really use formal explanations and rules uh, since the child doesn't, doesn't understand them, and same thing for the machine. So a large portion of the time uh, of someone like me is dedicated actually to collecting and preparing the training data, which, has, uh, which are examples of the task we want to teach the machines to do. So for example, if you want to train a model to detect and correct spelling mistakes, we'll need to collect many examples of corresponding texts with and without mistakes to allow the algorithm to find the regularities and to learn the rules from those examples. And at the end of the training, we evaluate the model on new examples that it has never seen before to make sure it hasn't just memorized the training examples, but it has actually learned how to solve the problem in new contexts. I really so, like this. We're talking about AI. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about AI and everybody is taking talking about AI and I'd like to know how we're going to use AI in Moril's app. Well, we are actually using it already. Uh -huh. uh, it, it, it's not very noticeable, but what's behind all the, uh, the, the pronunciations of words and expressions currently in both English and French uh, is, um, is a neural language model um, that is capable of take, to, uh, taking a text and outputting its pronunciation with, and this with the appropriate regional accent. So in uh, French, uh, in Canadian French and in Canadian English. So uh, once we generate those, uh, uh, those pronunciations, we make sure that they get validated and corrected if need be by uh, our team of teachers uh, that you met, uh, uh, mm -hmm. some of them, um, before they actually being published. So we never release automatically generated content without supervision because just like a child's actions, you know, you always need to supervise. <laughs> well, that, well, that's good to know. That there is a human and many humans taking care of making sure this is all right because you know we're not going to be replaced by those machines right <laughs> i'm the first to tell you that we're not going to be now thank you thank <laughs> you <laughs> well my last question is um uh 
And how do you feel connected with that, with that app? Because I know, um, you know, you've worked on this app almost since the beginning. It's really early on. What's next with knowing that there is AI and the machine coming up and it's, it's, people are using it more and more to make sure that, you know, everything works a little bit faster. How are we going to use that with Morel? Yeah, well, behind the scenes, and uh, Anne kind of gave you the scoop, uh, but we're preparing the introduction of news articles into the app ah. to offer reading comprehension activities in, uh, you know, as a complement to the listening comprehension activities that are currently on the app. Uh, but we're facing uh, the problem that most of uh, if not all of the uh, written content uh, of CBC and uh, Radio Canada, so all the articles, um, are too complicated for the beginner and the intermediate levels. So they require simplification or summarization to make them uh, shorter and more digestible. But in a way, this problem is an opportunity to use AI to produce those simplified versions and to assess their syntactic and lexical complexity uh, with the goal being to help our team of teachers produce many versions of an article, each one adjusted to a different learning level, and then be, being able to serve those uh, articles and uh, comprehension questions uh, as, uh, as additional activities to the, uh, to the learners, to the users of Moya. Well, thank you, Desi, for... Uh teaching us how AI is used in the app and also to make sure and to, to really let us know that nobody's gonna replace humans on this app. Thank you very much for your in-depth explanation. For Anne, yeah. we talked about AI, we talked about you know how we got the idea, the vision, and I'd like to know like a little bit more about the lived experience behind Morel because we know that at the heart of this application there is the user mm -hmm. and that's what we have in mind every time and from the teachers to Desi to Patrice to to Rosanna we all it all goes back to the actual user the person who, who has the dream of increasing their their skills building confidence their fears, um, yeah, so their fears. we often say it's not our app, it's the app of the people using it. Yes. So um, talking about this, by the way, I just noticed that we have a couple of comments, so if yeah, I may I'd share. Like to know. Wow, yeah. So uh, one says, I, as a teacher, Marie has been such a valuable tool for my students and to stay engaged outside of class in a practical way. Thank you for your work. That's amazing. That's and really great. Another person says, uh, Marie is one of the ways I can spend time watching content on my phone and feel productive <laughs> instead of guilty <laughs> because I am taking in a lot and learning as I do. And last person said they've been using Marie to improve their French and already feeling more confident. So to us, this is our pay. <laughs> this, this is, is what so drives amazing. us. Thank you yeah. for sending your comments throughout this live stream. This is really great to have an interactive mm -hmm. uh, discussion. Talking about interactive and mm -hmm. talking about li lived experience, mm -hmm. we, have, we are lucky to have two important guests with us today. Um, as many as you know, we chose the name of Morel to pay tribute to the uh, Honorable Morel Bélanger, the former Ottawa Vanier MP who championed the uh, the official languages in Canada. We sadly lost him in 2016, but his legacy lives on. And today to represent him and to talk also about the app in a different way, like I said, lived experience, we have his wife, Catherine Villanger. Welcome. Hello, nice to have you, nice to be invited. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll be talking to you soon. And also we're very excited to introduce Giovanna Saldana. Uh, a newcomer who is one of our first user uh, to use the app. And it's really fun to talk to both of you because both of you have a lived experience of, first of all, being an immigrant coming to Canada and also um, to have used this app. And I want to know, before we start that conversation, Catherine, you immigrated to Canada. You were married to the Honorable Morel Bélanger. What would you think he would think about this app that's named well, after uh, him? 
he would be tickled pink. So it's a third <laughs> one in English. He would be, he, he couldn't believe it's named after him, but, but he would be very, very pleased because he really believed and he himself, uh, you know, took the time to, to learn English. He wasn't uh, very good when he started university and he ended up going into English literature because wow. of his, his um, you know, he really respected both cultures and thought that Canada was both cultures and both languages and he equally fought for both either minority languages as official languages minister and uh, you know we spoke both all the time at home with friends and so he would be just and artificial intelligence he was a big science fiction person <laughs> so. that's all of his love in one app name after him i there love this go, exactly. <laughs> oh i like this i'd like this giovanna you came from mexico to canada and you're a very social person and <laughs> you know and you know, when we come here, we don't necessarily know one of the official languages or both. It's a barrier if you're a social person. How did the app help you? That's Be totally true. <laughs> yeah, I'm a social person. <laughs> Me too. I could tell. <laughs> yeah, so it was really hard at the start when I decided to immigrate here to Canada. I didn't speak English at all. I didn't speak uh, French at all. So it was a big cultural shock. Mm -hmm. when I arrived and the fact that I was not able to even do my groceries to go to the cinema that it's something that I love to do to go bowling have friends just to enjoy the life, the life here yes, yes exactly so it was something hard for me like a lot of immigrants the cultural shock that we have when we arrive here to don't know the culture the the typical words, you know, jokes. I don't get jokes before. <laughs> like, it, it was really hard. Now I love it. I watch uh, French movies, English movies. It's just another life. <laughs> and, I, and I really like the fact that you're really utilizing the application English and in French. And how did the app really learn you to uh, come into your Canadian, you know, um, you know experience? Yeah, so I started to take the francisation, mm -hmm. and uh, I was using the app as well. So it has been a big help. Like I always say, I love Moril, <laughs> so I'm really in love with it. You really love yeah, Moril, yeah. I really love Moril. And also what I, what I like about your experience is that Moril is not only something that you carry, but you shared with your family members. Yeah, that's true. My dad used Moril, all my sisters use Moril, all my family use Moril, all my friends use Moril. <laughs> so even on my He's, he's everybody's best class, friend, I could tell. Everyone, <laughs> yeah, that's well, true. Well, Catherine, you see Moril lives on. It's wonderful. It's and she's in love with Marie. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. And I'd like to know, you immigrated. We mentioned that you immigrated to Canada. Um, I would like to know if we were like, you know, back then, would Marie be in your app, in your cell phone as well? Well, that would have been really, really wonderful because while I did come to Canada with English, um, it was British English, so it Oof. would have hard to get Canadian version, but also on, on, on the French. It, it took me a while to, to find the right venue to learn my French, mm -hmm. and so it would have been really, really big help, and I still use it. I, I, I use it to, to improve, uh, you know, both of my languages. So it's, it's been useful for me too, and it's, uh, I, I think it's wonderful the way it's done, and I thank everybody as the wife and the user as well yeah it's been wonderful well i like the fact that both of you are users and also your lived experience of the user because sometimes we we all know um we all use many apps on our cell phone but we never know the faces of the user and thank you for being here sharing um also what morel would have loved to say <laughs> and also the fact that both of you are users thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that experience because i think you know people who are listening to us may you know just like me speak one language or the other but it seems like we could always learn from this app thank you very much and learn for the learners. One of the person commented, congrats, Giovanna, you speak beautifully. <laughs> so you. that's a good example of risk taking. So 
It takes courage. Yeah. And Catherine, you want to... Just very quickly, this was a vision of mm -hmm. Maurice to have uh, an accessible and free app. And mm -hmm. for people, not, you know, a, a, a util, not necessarily, he wasn't yeah. clear on what, but something that online people can learn. So this is a wonderful mm -hmm. reality and something he achieved uh, in a way, even though he is no longer with yeah. us. So. And that's Someone what mentioned actually the question if, if it's going to remain free and it's it still will remain free as well. So make it very accessible. Accessible, yeah. yeah. So it will remain free to answer that question. Yes. Well. It was great. I, I love the fact that we have lived experience on set people and also that his brand, his legacy and his heritage of being, you know, I've seen him fought for the official languages. Um, for, for those who are listening, I grew up in Ottawa and I've, saw, I've seen Morel really fought for, you know, making sure that we had those services in both official languages. And that he fought for English as much as he fought mm -hmm. for French. That's why... Minority languages, yeah. Yeah, and that's why this, uh, th this app carries well his name. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anne, did we get more comments? A person is grateful for, for this idea of Maril Belanger. <laughs> And uh, we, we had some comments actually this morning about teachers. Some, some people in the audience might be teachers as well. So um, a couple of people were asking how to use this in a class setting. We have a teacher's guide that we've developed. Yes. Uh, and we also have a training session uh, in the fall to help you learn how to use Maril with your students. So if you're interested, you can send us an email at maril at cbc.ca. So for any comment, as a general rule, the more we receive comment, feedback, questions, suggestions, the more we can develop the, the app based on your needs. So it's the whole idea, of, as Patrice said, it's, it's constant evolution, iterative process where we develop, test, and, and make sure that we keep adding value. So yeah. adding, add, val yeah. <laughs> <laughs> adding value to the user. And yeah. before we go on, I'd like to know uh, if we want to stay connected with people to be engaged with Maril, what are the next steps? Uh, well, you, s you can send us an email, uh, maril at cbc.ca, to uh, tell us what your feedback are, as I said. The other thing is uh, we have a network of ambassadors that we're trying to put together. Yeah, we just like have I was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we already have a few ambassadors. Uh, the role is to really share the, the knowledge that this beautiful app exists and uh, share with different communities, engage in a conversation as well to know how we can tailor the app based on the needs of the users. Um, if you or anyone that you know want to be part of the Moril team as an ambassador, reach out to us, Moril at cbc.ca. Well, thank you, Anne. And thank you, Catherine and Giovanna, for you know, taking part in this amazing discussion about, you know, the app, we've learned a lot about the, you know, the development, the creation and the people behind it, the teachers and the user. And thank you, everybody that connected today to celebrate with us the second anniversary of the app. Thank you for connecting and follow us. And like Anne said, continue to ask questions because we are developing this app as we go. Mm -hmm because you are, are the heart of the application. Mm -hmm. And you will be, again, the, the, the people engaged in the next step as well. Yeah. So we wanted to thank you for your collaboration with us. Thank you.